Okay. So compiling. So com most tools for your compiling needs are going to be in the command line anyway when it comes to like Linux development. So like make and all the others, they're going to be right there. So jump much like the tools that were used previous in the previous part. The whole compiling thing, you're basically running your compiler tools from within Vim. But anyway, here we go. There are a lot of tools available for compiling and interpreting code on the Unix platform, and they tend to be used in different ways. However, conceptually, many of the steps are the same. Here I'll discuss compiling C code for, with GCC from the GNU compiler collection and the, briefly using the briefly the use of Perl as an example of an interpreter. GCC is a very mature GPL licensed collection of compilers, perhaps best known for working with C and C++ programs, its free software license, and near ubiquity on free Unix-like systems like GNU Linux and BSD has made it enduringly popular to these, for these purposes. Though some more modern alternatives are available in compilers using the LLVM infrastructure, such as Clang or Muscle. The front-end binaries for GNU compiler collection are the best thought of. Less is a set of complete compilers in their own right, and more is drivers for a set of discrete programming tools performing parsing, compiling, and linking, among other steps. This means that while you can use GCC with a relatively simple command line to compile straight from C sources to a working binary, you can also inspect in more detail the steps it takes along the way and tweak it accordingly. So this is kind of true. You've got a lot of options for tweaking in GCC <clears throat> and even with its like C plus with um, GNU's C plus plus options you've got a whole host of options in fact when you're compiling a Game Boy ROM if you look at the oh make file let's see if you'll find largely that let's go with the poke crystal you'll find largely C GCC is used in a lot of the compiling. So, um, but up, but up, or at least partially, okay? Um, you've got R RGBDS that is largely used for compiling programs that way. And then it's like a whole tool set of other programs that generally comes with it, like scripts that link with RGBDX that work with it. And then I believe in general, once you get to compiling all your oh, stuff together, then GCC comes in and compiles everything into a single file. Let me see. Do, do, do tidy, clean, compare. Or was it uh, uh, Polka Crystal GBC? So, our, okay. So RGBD, it's not GCC, but I believe it is somewhat based on GCC in some ways that you need GCC on it in order to run it. But yeah, so RGB link, RGB fix, and then you've got everything that links together and then creates the singular file on it and then compiles it all together. So if we go... RGB ASM, and then RGB fix, and so on. You've got your RGB DS like variable that it's using to for the path as well. So <clears throat> it's a large tool set that takes everything and compiles it into a single file. I won't be discussing the use of make files here, though you'll almost certainly be wanting them for any C project more than one file that will be discussed in the next article on build automation tools. You can compile object code from a C source file like so. GCC, example C, example O. Assuming it's a valid C program, this will generate an unlinked binary object file called example.o in the current directory or tell the reasons, tell you the reasons it can't. You can inspect its assembler contents with object dump tool. Alternatively, you can get GCC to output the appropriate assembly code for the object directly with the dash s parameter. So this is where some of the GCC stuff comes in in like Game Boy ROM development is you can have assembly code and so on. 
This kind of assembly output can be particularly instructive, or at least interesting, when printed in line with the source code itself, which you can do with this. Whole like schmackaroon of stuff. The C preprocessor CPP is generally used to include header files and define macros, among other things. It's a normal part of GCC compilation, but you can view the C code it generates by invoking CPP directly. This will print out the complete code as it would be compiled with includes and relevant macros applied. One or more objects can be linked into appropriate binaries like so. In this example, GCC is not doing much more than abstracting a call to LD. The GNU linker, the command produces an executable binary called the example. Compiling, assembling, and linking. All of the above can be done with one in one step with example C dash O example. This is a little simpler, but compiling objects independently turns out to have some practical performance benefits in not recompiling code unnecessarily, which I'll discuss in the next article. C files and headers can be explicitly included in a compilation call with the dash I parameter. Similarly, if the code needs to be dynamically linked against a compiled system library available in common locations like lib or user lib, such as ncurses, that can be included with the dash L parameter. So yeah, dash capital I can include the headers. And then you've got the dash L for your standard libraries that are dynamically linked otherwise depending on your distro if you have a lot of necessary inclusions and links in your compilation process it makes sense to put this into your environment variable so you've got your export c flags then your export c libs and then your gcc flags and so on and then your gcc line right there this very common step is another thing that a make file is designed to abstract away from you so you basically set up everything in a make file and then it can like take care of as a script it takes care of all that making stuff for you to inspect in more detail what gcc is doing with any call you can add the dash v switch to prompt it to print its compilation plan on the standard error stream if you don't want it to actually generate object files or linked binaries it's sometimes tidier to use dash hash 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 yeah hash 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 instead this mostly inst is mostly instructive to see what steps the GCC binary is abstracting away for you, but in specific cases it can be useful to identify steps the compiler is taking that you may not necessarily want it to. So this allows for like tweaking and optimization for whatever you're doing and working on. <clears throat> More verbose error checking, you can add the dash w all and or pedantic options to GCC to call it to prompt it to warn you about things that may not necessarily be errors but could be. This is good for including in your make file or your make prog definition vim as it works well with the quick fix window discussed in a previous article and will enable you to write more readable, compatible, and less error prone code as it warns you more extensively about errors. So I've seen this the pedantic thing put in to show all the different errors that pop up and depending on your distro with like AUR builds you will see this sometimes and it's interesting to see like where like slight errors and warnings happen that will tell you that the code the code still compiles but there are issues with it that aren't exactly fully syntactic up syntactically up to snuff or that are just hanging out doing nothing profiling compilation time you can pass the flag dash time to gcc to generate output showing how long each step is taking <clears throat> optimization you can pass generic optimization options to gcc to make it attempt to build more efficient object files and linked binaries at the expense of compilation time finding I find dash 02 is usually a happy medium for code going into production. Like any other bash co command, all of this can be called from within Vim by bang gcc percent dash o example. So next is interpreters, and that's a really short one. So 
The approach to interpreter code on Unix-like systems is very different. In these examples, I'll use Perl, but most of these principles will be applicable to interpreted Python or Ruby code, for example. You can run a string of Perl code directly into the interpreter in any one of the following ways. In this case, printing the single line hello world to the screen with the line break following. The first one is perhaps the tidiest and most standard way to work with Perl. The second uses here doc string and the third classic Unix shell pipe. So you've got the Perl that is standard, then you've got that one, and then you've got your echo print and then it pipes it into Perl. Which is interesting that like you do this, but it halfway makes sense. You're just piping the standard input into Perl, which I've seen used in some school courses. So you can like verify that certain random strings of code are valid Perl code per se. Of course, it's more typical to keep the code in a file, which can be run directly. So you run Perl on the file. In either case, you can check the syntax of the code without actually running it with the dash C switch, which was what was being used in this particular exercise in the class in order, so you would basically pipe a random string of code into Perl dash C in order to verify the syntax of the code. And then if it found a valid syntax of code, it would output what that line was and ended up being random characters that for some reason passed the sniff test. But to use a script as a logical binary, you can invoke it directly without knowing or caring what the script is. You can add a special first line with a file called the shebang that does some magic to specify the interpreter through which the file should be run. So I like shebang files. Um, in fact, I've got a lot of them in my .scripts directory that I use quite heavily. So you've got the battery here for, oh, a bar implementation. I don't remember which one or DDO. DWM blocks or whatever that has a shebang bin sh line. If I go through here, you've got bin bash and some of the BSPWM files. If I go to, I've done more with um, shell stuff. You've got bin python, which is one that I built for spamming python message or spamming discord messages from my computer from input so i had tweaked it just right and then let's see what others do i have i think that's the most of it you've got user bin env python 3 user bin env bash which creates a separate environment and runs it in there completely um then here's our env perl for fishies so if i execute that you can see how that works so I literally, it's just executing a file. If I added Py, a shebang line for Python up here, it would run it under Python. So the shebang line, like you mentioned, tells you, what am I interpreting it this with? And then it just runs it with that interpreter. And I think it's just Perl, Python, shell for the most part. I don't really have any Ruby stuff at all in here. So yeah. So now, <clears throat> let's see. Script then needs to be made executable with a chmod call, chmod plus x. It's also good practice to rename it to remove the extension since it's now taking the shape of a logic binary and can thereafter be invoked directly as if it were a compiled binary. This works so transparently that many of the common utilities on modern Modern systems, such as the add user front end to user add, are actually Perl or even Python scripts. In the next post, I'll describe the use of make. So this is really cool because interpreters are really cool because then you can call that from Vim. And if you add that script to a path directory, like your lo dot local bin directory, then it makes it even more useful. So like I've added dot scripts to my path, but if I go and go to local bin, you can see that e some of these are here. River CTL and river tile 
that are installed in here in my home directory that I that only I as the user can call in my environment and that other users can't call. So I can have my own custom e executables for just me that's separate from everyone else, which is where the Unix sandboxing is really nice for various reasons, then I can limit my user directory to only be usable by the owner and then everybody else can't even see it and so on and so forth. If you enjoyed the video, then like, comment, subscribe, feed the algorithm, boost the video up, share this video with your friends. If you found it informative or you just want to chat, I've got plenty of places in the description. Discord, Gilded, and what have you. Check those out, and I will see you guys in the next one.